There are a lot of trends. I mean, there's there's obviously demographics to deal with. You got a lot of younger people. Generation Y, biggest generation ever, 19 to 32, more kids coming out of college. Unfortunately, a lot of them are having difficulty getting a job. And if they are getting a job, they need to save up for a down payment because credit is very restricted now. Even if you have a good credit score, you're probably going to save for a down payment. And you're less certain how important it is to get into ownership housing immediately because while house prices went up at two and a half to three percent for 30 years on average, you know, we had the bubble starting in 2002 or so and popping in seven. So now people are thinking, well, it's not a certainty house prices are going up and have they hit bottom. I think a lot of things are, are therefore changing. One of the amazing things in this country is, you know, we have thought we needed a million and a half new housing units a year, combination of manufactured housing, rental housing, single family housing, and all that. We've been building it a third of that rate now for four years. So there's got to be a big pent-up demand, principally I think kids that are still home and people living multi-generationally other than just, you know, college kids and recent graduates. So, I, you know, if you're a developer, I think you're going to have to be really thoughtful about how much speculative inventory and certainly about building more into the suburbs because people want to live more urban and kids want to be more where the action is and less dependent on their cars, I think. Back during the Second World War, when I grew up in Arlington, Virginia, house sizes were on average 900 square feet in this country. And as the GIs came back and as we supported housing with Freddie and Fannie and there was more and more push to home ownership and, and suburban sprawl, house sizes got bigger and average 2,300 square feet last I read. Now, every recession, there's a discussion about them getting smaller. And in fact, they do come down a little bit. Whether this is a secular trend or just a cyclical response to the recession, I'm not sure. I wouldn't necessarily bet on them getting a lot smaller, but I think where they're going to be built is going to be different. I think the, the builders are going to do less spec housing. Community development is a risky business. You know, we learned that, I learned that in, in my first career when we were building recreational second homes because if you leverage it, you have much debt and a downturn comes and the market shuts down, you just go broke. Um, so I wouldn't doubt that communities, to the extent that new communities are built, will be smaller and I think the developers will take less risk. I don't know about the flexibility of housing. I think a lot of us are going to be thinking about whether A, the kids are going to come back and live with us for a while or B, the parents are going to come live with us because we know that everybody's living longer and a large percentage of, as John McElwain was telling us in his report, a large percentage of older adults are not going to have enough savings to get by just on Social Security, are they going to live very difficult? So a lot of, I think, multi-generational living is ahead of us, and if you have flexibility in your house or you even design it that way so that your parents or parent can live you without being, you know, in your face all the time and, and adversely impacting your family life, that's going to be healthier. The fact that people are aging and aging healthier, as John John's report puts out is going to have a profound effect on what happens and I hope there's not going to be a generational war but you know there are a lot of older people now that don't have those fixed retirements and whose 401k hasn't done very good if they even have one they're going to be dependent on Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid. Um, I think many of them are going to have to or going to want to and maybe society will want them to age in place. And then we're going to have to have support services to keep people in their own homes because trying for everybody to move into uh, assisted living or nursing home is going to be too expensive for the country. And so we've got just more and more, particularly with the baby boomers hitting 65, more and more of an issue to think about how we address the housing and health care needs of our senior citizens.